didn't matter how much heat there was when you were beating Tommy Dreamer or uh, uh, Tommy Rich down, you knew in your heart of hearts it's just a matter of time before he starts. Somebody say something about firing up, right? And it's going to be time to go. <laughs> A week after the pay-per-view, and it's wonderfully on the date of 4.20, April uh, 20th. Tommy Rich and Doug Gilbert spent the night in prison for being arrested by uh, having possession of weed. <laughs> well, what a, what a different world we're living in, huh? <laughs> um, you, mean, you, mean, you mean to tell me they were, those, those guys were actually smoking pot? I don't know. I don't know enough to cast aspersions on... Uh, Doug Gilbert, <laughs> but I can definitely believe to, uh, to, uh, uh, Tommy Rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think all of the above, yeah, were probably uh, capable of doing that and probably uh, <laughs> probably partaking and inhaling, so yes. Yeah, not like Bill Clinton, for goodness sake. Uh, listen, yes, uh, yeah. uh, why don't we end this on a nice, fun story on uh, Wildfire Tommy Rich. Somebody yes. say something about fired up. Oh, yeah. Tr the, the first real... I thought I lost it. The call came in and went back. Yeah. Uh, the first real drawing, modern drawing icon in wrestling, where wrestling was going to go in the, in the 20, 25 years beyond Tommy Rich. <clears throat> he was the template, right? That baby face that could go out there, <clears throat> get his ass kicked, never die, and sooner or later start making that back. That gave the basic key tenets of great baby faces right heart never give up never say die can always come back um tommy personified that and did it at a time when he was what 22 three four years old still green but in the ring working with really great talents and that explosive fiery comeback uh sell his ass off get the color get the sauce whatever again like like uh, Ricky Morton and R Ricky uh, Steamboat, <clears throat> he was capable of getting that, that crowd, the girls in that crowd, to the edge of their seat, tears in their eyes, pleading for him, right? And those are the things that, you know, like we've talked about all these different facets of the business that have changed. You, the promoters, as they were putting him up the card, could see this gravity drawing to him. You know, there's this young kid, very young by business standards, uh, seemingly coming from no place, and all of a sudden he's in these top matches with you know, your Andersons and your Abdullahs and guys like that, and you know always getting that line in and always getting that comeback in. Uh, didn't matter how much heat there was when you were beating Tommy Dream or uh, uh, Tommy Rich down, you knew in your heart of hearts it's just a matter of time before he starts. Somebody say something about firing up, right? And it's going to be time to go. And the crowd, the girls, the, and then the sooner or later, the guys coming with it, right? Here's a, here's one of the good old Southern boys, one of us going out there and doing it. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it shows a lot of the things that we see, see much later in the business, the demographics that, that, that you're trying to hit with that, uh, the things you're not trying to hit with it, uh, where you think that character will play or won't play. Um, I would dare say that anybody at a, at an NWA show at that time or Georgia Championship Wrestling show at that time was pretty much died in the wool of Southerner and everything that means. And so you never got the the thought in your or feeling it when you're watching Tommy Wildfire Rich that you were seeing a wannabe like Shane Douglas and and uh, Johnny Lee Ace as skaters, right? Uh, you knew he was the real deal. You could tell by the way he spoke. You could tell by the things he said, the anecdotes he'd give, and the examples that he would give. Uh, Southerners have a very uh, st stylized and pronounced way of expressing things, and he had that. And so everybody watching him that was in that area at the time in Georgia and South Carolina and all those places knew instinctively this guy is a Southerner. He's one of us. And so when he'd get his ass kicked and colored up and everything else, and he'd start making that comeback that gave support, love, respect, and call out to every redneck out there watching wrestling. If he can do it, I can do it. So I was brilliant. You know, and I, I'm sure there might've been one or two before, but he was that first big baby face money draw as a guy that wasn't really exactly over yet. Like on paper, you'd say, well, we still need another year or two to build him 
or we can just throw them head first into this angle and it works like spades. So the latter obviously is mm. they did, not we. 